from Osmanglonia at the Saipan Airport as local residents sound off on the soaring costs of travel. The health of the economy on Guam. Federal officials from the Census Bureau are here on island hoping to get the attention of businesses here. I'm Julian Hernandez with the report on how this upcoming survey will mean for the island. Good evening. Welcome to KUAM News Primetime. I'm Nick Delgado. And I'm Destiny Cruz. Thanks for being here with us tonight. Well, Des, the central community on edge. Multiple armed robberies reported in Manila and Zonia in just the past two weeks. Police now searching for the suspects, unable to say just yet if the crimes are connected. A frightening encounter for a worker at this Pizza Hut location in Manila. He entered the door and then just pointed his gun to us to me and one of our, my manager and asked for the money in the rich. As I was pulling out the money, the teacher said to give me the f whole thing. The victim, who we are not naming for her protection, is left stunned as she was being held at gunpoint. My mind was just blank. I was just in shock, like you know, it just all of a sudden happened. After handing over the cash, they pushed the emergency alarm and ran for help before calling police. Officers responding here Monday night just before 8 p.m. The robber described as a man last seen wearing a black hat, black mask and black shirt with brown shorts. He took off to the Payless located next door. I was shocked because like it was just yesterday. Late Saturday on Roberto Street, not far away, a man armed with a rifle went into the K2 market in Mangilao. The robber held the employee at gunpoint before taking off with $300 in cash and several packs of cigarettes. He was last seen taking off on foot to the store across the street. Witnesses describe the suspect as being 5'2 to 5'4, medium build with a brown complexion. These two armed robberies, the latest of at least seven armed robberies, leaving police investigators busy. At 3.25 a.m. today, officers were called again to the mobile gas station in Jotnya. The robber held the cashier at gunpoint and took off with money and a smartphone. Witnesses described the suspect as having a light complexion, last seen wearing long pants and a gray jacket. GPD spokesperson Officer Berlin Savella tells KUAM detectives are currently following up on leads and vetting the information provided for the incidents. Anyone with information is asked to call police or report it to Guam Crime Stoppers. As tensions soar over the U.S. downing of more potential Chinese aerial spying equipment in the last few days, the governor's office remains mum over what may have happened over Guam. Likewise, Joint Region Marianas has also had little to say. Here's with more is KWIF's Nestor Lacanto. Governor Leon Guerrero was very clear during a U.S. Senate hearing on the State of the Territories Friday that she was briefed about a spy balloon even as it was passing over Guam. Since then, we've been asking Adloop for more details. Who specifically briefed the governor and when? So far, there's been no response, and the governor is unavailable and will be in Pompeii for the Micronesia Island Forum, we're told. Meanwhile, the White House held a press briefing on the three latest downings of potential Chinese aerial spying equipment. Security Council spokesman Admiral John Kirby. The president has made this a very top priority. We have over the course of just the last few days, and certainly over the course of last week, reached out to inform and brief members of Congress and relevant state governors of the operations that we were conducting and of the recovery operations that are underway. <clears throat> the President, through his National Security Advisor, has today directed an interagency team to study the broader policy implications for detection, analysis, and disposition of unidentified aerial objects that pose either safety or security risks. Point Region Marianas would neither confirm or deny any spying incident over Guam. It only released a statement saying, in part, quote, In the spirit of transparency, JRM is routinely in direct communication with local and federal partners in Guam regarding any potential threat or unusual activity and our defensive posture to counter those threats. We are committed to deterring adversaries in support of a free and open Indo-Pacific. Nestor Lacanto. KUAM News. Thanks, Ness. Well, how much are you willing to pay for a round-trip flight between Guam and the CNMI? Some residents here at home and up in Saipan say it's gotten too expensive. Regional correspondent Tomas Mangluttny reports on the soaring cost to travel for just minutes. 
How much is too much? Residents on Saipan and Guam sounding off on the soaring cost of short half-hour round-trip tickets between the islands. United Airlines mobile app showing an economy seat for $580 and a first-class seat selling for $940. One travel website, Travel Plus Leisure, citing U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics Consumer Price Index, showing that overall, airfare rose 42.9 percent from September 2021 to September 2022 across the nation. They attribute some of that rise to fuel prices. But new regional competition has also added more fuel to the conversation. Mariana Southern Airways recently announced their flights from the CNMI to Guam for as much as $149 one way. But no matter the sticker on the plane, there's still sticker shock for a community wanting to catch a break. Jared Igasayer writing to KOAM saying, Outrageous. I fly every month to drill with the Army Reserve and the small planes can't hold all of my gear as it exceeds their weight limit. It's really hard using alternatives when even the alternatives doesn't suffice. Monyaka de Oro weighing in, telling us they have increased the cost of flights too many times in the last three years. It's crazy high. Another commenter, Ignacio de la Cruz, writing, I think I will not go to Guam for a while, or rather I'd go to Korea, Japan, Thailand, or Philippines. Two local businessmen pointing out to KUAM that the prices come as airlines receive government subsidies, most notably in the NMI, the now-defunct Tourism Resumption Investment Plan under the Marianas Visitors Authority, costing more than $10 million of Federal American Rescue Plan funds in support of flights. KUAM has reached out to United Airlines for comment. Tomas Manglonia, KUAM News, Saipan. Thanks, Tomas. Well, the Guam and CNMI have formed the Mariana Islands Border Enforcement Security Task Force under the National Homeland Security Investigation Section. The agreement to establish the regional task force was made after a meeting with Guam Governor Lulian Guerrero, CNMI Lieutenant Governor David Apatang, with the goal to share information and for federal partners to collaborate with local police and customs officers. Several Chinese nationals have come to Guam illegally from the CNMI in search of work. There are several active cases in local and federal court related to the illegal entries in the past year. This is just a new uh, a task force that they are forming up uh, to uh, integrate our local law enforcement with the Homeland Security uh, investigation uh, sections. And, um, you know, my interest in this is that uh, Homeland Security at the local level, uh, we also look at any threats of all hazards, either man-made, or, or anything that comes in our areas of responsibilities. No additional information has been released from CNMI and Guam officials. KUM has reached out to Adelope for comment. Well, we're going to take a quick break, but first, happy Valentine's Day. Happy I forgot to Valentine's say that off the top of the Day. show, Des. Yes. But happy Valentine's Day to everybody. <laughs> and to Pete Anderson behind the camera. We'll be right back. Keep it here. You're watching KUM. The wait is over, Guam. The all-new state-of-the-art car wash is now open at Cars Plus. Introducing Finish Line Express, open seven days a week. The all-new cashless drive through car wash is also the largest car wash on island that can accommodate vehicles such as lifted Jeeps and full-size pickup trucks. Just roll up, pick a wash, insert credit card, or show your EverWash app and roll through. Plus, power vacuums are available to clean the interior. Show your vehicle some love today at the all-new car wash at Cars Plus and Mighty. Open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. seven days a week here with this experience today i mean top notch it helps you in the long run make sure that you're always checking your health it's not only yourself that you're checking yourself actually you need to check uh, each other and then at the same time if you have the right facility to to go to please go to the medical seat
Two officials from the U.S. Census are on Guam and met with local Department of Labor to finalize plans for the 2022 Economic Census Plan. As KUM's Jillian Hernandez reports, the Census Bureau is asking local businesses cooperation as they survey the island's economy. How well is Guam's economy? As the official measurement of businesses, the Economic Census provides a comprehensive measure of the activity by industry and election district for the island. By law, it is required for businesses to respond and complete the census. This is the same law that provides for confidentiality of all responses and the data will be used for statistical purposes only. Robert News is with the Economic Census. This is a survey that we do once every five years for years that end in two and seven and it covers every business on Guam. And this survey asks basic business statistics such as sales, payroll, employment, uh, inventories, capital expenditures, and lots of other industry-specific data for the U.S. territories. This economic census is the only economic data collection that we do. So the Bureau of Economic Analysis really relies upon these statistics for their GDP estimates. According to bureau officials, Taking the survey will help businesses and policymakers see industry trends, identify areas of strength in the economy, and businesses to make decisions based on data. Guam businesses will receive census forms by mail this month and will primarily be an online data collection. The electronic reporting tool that we created for the 2022 economic census has been, uh, been devoted a lot of resources to making it easy to use, faster and easier than paper. It uh, reduces the processing time on our end so we can get the statistics out sooner. Once the Census Bureau collects the data and releases the report in June 2024, officials should then have a better understanding of the island's economy and what to do moving forward. The 2017 numbers showed um, a thriving economy here. Um, so we'll see how that pans out. but. You know, it's just hard to say with the pandemic, and since we don't have any other more frequent measures. For secure online reporting, instructions and a unique company code will be provided to respondents in the mail. Small businesses on Guam will have a paper option available. If businesses have questions when they receive the economic census letter, officials say don't worry. A local phone number will be provided. Julian Hernandez, KUAM News. The government offices at Adaloop are undergoing some major facility upgrades. Adaloop officials confirming they are tapping into hundreds of thousands in federal funding to fix the place. Mitsuki Hiriyama with the report. Adaloop under construction. These renovations underway include structural repairs and maintenance throughout the property, such as fixing broken ceilings and walls, corroded and faulty windows and doors, weakened load bearing beams, dilapidated air conditioner ducts, non skid floor paint, and more. The offices affected are the Bureau of Budget and Management Research, the Bureau of Statistics and Planning, and divisions within the governor's office. But Governor's Communication Director Crystal Paco San Augustin says there has been minimal impact on operations. Repairs being executed wing by wing. Some offices have limited access for a short period, but she says services remain available to the public. The administration tapping into a $600,000 2017 federally funded capital improvement project grant. The money was awarded to the previous administration. Paco San Augustin adding, though renovations were delayed due to the pandemic, the work is now nearly 80 percent done. The last time the facility saw upgrades was more than three decades ago. Now during the ongoing repairs, the governor and lieutenant governor moved their offices up to the government house in Aganya Heights. Officials here say it's for safety reasons. The entire project is expected to be complete at the end of March. Matsuki Hariyama, KUAM News. A master plan for Guam's capital city has finally been approved. Yes, it comes more than 25 years after the Hagania Restoration and Redevelopment Authority was created. Adelou saying the plan was submitted to the legislature last October 21st. A public hearing was held in November and it actually lapsed into law in December without any further legislative action. HRRA Executive Director Lasia Casil. So the plan itself, um, it's, it's more policy and structure and how we deal with um, the public, how we deal with the 
uh, inner office agencies, all the stakeholders. It kind of, it deals with the personality of what we're trying to create here in Hagatnya. It's completely separate from the implementation plan. She says it covers the design guidelines, such as colors, shapes, and materials to be used, but it does not determine the details of specific projects. You know, the projects, they, there are conceptual, there are half a billion dollars worth of, of projects. There's no way that we could have, have you know, passed that through the legislature. Um, you know, we'd have to look for funding, we'd have to look for um, resources. So, so it's, it's completely separate. Funding for specific projects will be one of the main tasks of the HRA going forward. We'll have the full conversation with Director Casillo and Board Chairperson Marie Leon Guerrero on an upcoming segment, segment of The Hub. The CNMI Department of Lands and Natural Resources is investigating a possible discovery of rhino beetles on Saipan in the Kagman area. CNMI Invasive Species Coordinator Frank Alden told KUAM they are collecting samples of larvae from the home of the resident who reported the possible discovery. Alden says they sent the specimens to the University of Guam for an analysis and identification. identification. He said DLNR conducted an extensive survey on Monday searching for any indication of the rhino beetle in coconut trees. There haven't been any findings so far, and he points out that the larvae we have found so far are far more smaller than the average rhino beetle larvae in Rhoda. One of the first discoveries of the rhino beetle in the CNMI was made in 2017 on Rhoda, which authorities believe were on a boat from Guam. He says they will provide more information once more analysis is done on Guam. While well, saying they provide crucial backup for the island-wide power system, GPA wants to extend the contract for the operation of an 88-megawatt PD-89 generators. In a CCU work session today, GPA recommended a five-year, $14 million per year extension with the Marianas Energy Corporation to run the plant. General Manager John Benavetti says until the massive 198-megawatt Ukudu plant is built, they need all the help they can get. And the rest of the CT, so, you know, they're not meant to run like they are 30, 30, Every day, 30% of the energy is being produced by all of these other generators. So uh, they're falling down uh, one by one, and then we keep on trying to keep them in the you know? This would be the second five-year extension of the operation contract, and there was some discussion over whether they'd have to bid out the project. The PD plant was built through a long-term independent power producer deal and turned over to GPA in 2019. Well, you know what time it is. It's Valentine's Day. Yes, many getting their candies and flowers, just like Destiny here. Hundreds of last minute shoppers hitting the stores to get that special gift this V-Day holiday. KUAM checking out Tove's flower shop in Timoning, where we met Jaden Duenas of Sonia. I did meet um, this this um, girl about a week ago, and um, my coworker had asked me yesterday, he was like, Park, are you going to get anything for her? I was like, am I? And so I kind of made that last minute decision to come today and uh, to go get her flowers and chocolates and whatnot. Smooth there, Jaden. Well, store manager Tina Garcia saying she helped at least 300 customers just before lunchtime. Garcia adds the Valentine's shopping is expected to continue for the next couple of days, even well after the love day. Now for a look at your world at home. We take you south to the FSM in Yap. Our Victoria's found giving us this view during the visit to his home island. Safe travels, Mr. One Micronesia. His new show now available on KUAM. I've always had a love for anything local. Ever since I was a child visiting my grandma's lay shop, I felt a deep connection to the local shopkeepers, local artisans, and local farmers who make Hawaii so unique and so special. Today, I'm grateful to have a job helping Bank of Hawaii and its employees give back to our local communities. I'm Momia Kimsu from Bank of Hawaii, and I'm proud to help you live your happy. Don't need to work, babe, keep the smile on your face. The moments you can't replace, and I'll be around. Wherever 
life takes you, we're always here for you. Calvo's Insurance. Count on us for life. Jack, the data shows that people love our more flavorful Ultimate Cheeseburgers. Show me the data. So the data's good. The data's real good. Well, actually, it's the best data I've ever had. My best-selling Ultimate Cheeseburgers, now seasoned as they grill. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. All right, hop it, everybody. Welcome to the sports show. I'm your sports guy, Jason Salas, and I am really, really excited because I am in the presence of greatness right now. I have Tassi and Brandon, daughter and father, the next big thing in in youth wrestling. So, uh, Tassi, I've I've heard so much about you. I've seen you on Instagram. I've seen your channel. Um, I know there's a GoFundMe campaign because you are really going places uh, in wrestling. So, hop it from Guam. Thanks. Thanks for having us. All right, um, uh, Brandon. Tell us, a, tell us a little bit about like uh, your family. What, um, where are you, where are your roots? And um, I know you guys are stateside right now, but you guys are, yeah. you guys are making so much um, positive news here, and everybody here on the island is really, really rallying behind you guys. Yeah, I I was over there, uh, basically for like eleven years, from twenty or nineteen ninety nine to like two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Um, and my family's from Agate. All uh, right. Originally. And um, yeah, and I got into jujitsu uh, with the Carlson Gracie team in around 2003. And that's kind of where my journey with grappling started. And that, yeah, and then I moved over here. All right. So, Tassi, what got you into, uh, what got you into wrestling? And, and what do you really, really like about the sport? Um, my dad, he took me, he told me that um, I was going to come to wrestling and then I'm going to see if I liked it or not. And then I just started coming every day and I started liking it and I got better and I just really like it. Did Did you find that it was really easy for you or did it just come naturally or did you have really find out that, hey, this is fun, uh, but I really, really got to work on it? Um... I think it was, I thought it was really fun and it was um, pretty easy for a while. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you to be, to be involved in and get so much love and so much support, you know, like people, again, people find you like on social media and they're just cheering you on and they're like, you're inspiring um, other girls, other boys, other athletes much older than yourself, you know, uh, people like me, you're a role model to a lot of people. Um, do you know that right now? And, and then what does that mean to you? And what, what message do you have to people who, who follow you and really um, say, go get him, Tassi? Um, it makes me happy. And I think that people that um, get inspired, I think that they should um, not, they should uh, not give up if they do wrestling because it's a really fun sport. Absolutely. Okay, so that's Tassi. And Brandon, then there's a GoFundMe attached to that. Yes. And oh, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the GoFundMe because obviously yeah. you know, dreams come in truth through athletics and everything. So what can we, you know, your island community do to to make that make that a reality? Yeah. So there's a GoFundMe attached to that Instagram uh, that people can donate to. Um, and then we've had people like Alex Castro uh, and Most Hated. Is gonna, he's sending out a bunch of gear for her. Right. Uh, so that's awesome. So she'll be able to represent that. Uh, and just, yeah, all the people that have been donating has been really helpful. But oh, yeah, that's cool. it's the best way to, to do it. So keep, so keep donating, everybody, because as some someone we're all connected to, a member of our island family, really getting it done in sports. So let, let's let's do the, the Guamanian thing and let's support one of our own because we, we take care of our island family. And you guys certainly... Um, are always going to be island family members. So Tassi and Brandon Boots, man, congratulations on all your success, uh, Tassi. We're big fans of yours, and we're really looking forward to see what you have coming up. All right, thanks. All right, uh, take care, guys. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together.
This burger looked at one slice of melted cheese and said, more cheese. It looked at pickles and said, also onions. It wanted to be more than hot. It wanted to be juicy. This is the Quarter Pounder with cheese. If you thought one napkin for the Quarter Pounder with cheese was enough, it's not enough. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Even with the convenience and success of local online stores, pop-ups and swap meets have been a great boost for some businesses. Hundreds of those small businesses turned up at the island's largest indoor swap meet at the Freedom Park in Tumuning Saturday, complete with a Valentine's Day-themed photo booth, live entertainment and food trucks. Vendors got to meet their customers in person while showcasing their products at the monthly swap meet and pop-up market. At first, it was a little bit slow getting our name out there. Um, it's a little bit hard to, to convince people to try something new sometimes. But since then, we've grown quite a bit. Uh, our name is pretty recognizable now in the fishing community, I like to think. And yeah, we supply our stuff at James Tackle now. So that's a really big, that's a, that was a really big step forward for us. Online is great. Uh, but it's also great to meet the people that are buying your stuff. And uh, like for example, today we, I had like maybe four or five traveling nurses come through here. And they spent over four hundred dollars buying our cultural stuff. Many of the vendors seeing the benefits of pushing out their local products at the event. It was also an effort to raise money. Each one dollar entry fee went towards supporting the Pacific War Museum. Finally tonight, your Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club shout outs. Here are your happy birthday greetings submitted on KUAM.com. Happy birthday on Valentine's Day. What a wonderful day to be born. What a wonderful day to be alive. What a wonderful day to be in love. And we say happy birthday to Auntie Bertha, otherwise known to us Guamanians as Bertha Affligui. Auntie Bertha, we love you so much and may you have a beautiful and blessed day. God bless you, says a very, very proud and loving niece, Aubrey. Aubrey, that's a fantastic shout out. Good job. Dwayne Tovez celebrates a birthday on this Valentine's Day and happy blessed birthday, Dwayne. Your family and friends says we love you. Roses are red, seltzers are bubbly. Best birthday wishes to our brunch bureau buddy. This is Tanya Stotz Cruz who is getting happy birthday love from your bitter brunch bureau. The BBB, the triple B's, nice. 18 years of blessings with this beauty, Kaylee Pinaula. Happy birthday to our forever queen of hoops, E. Nice. Swishing you an abundance of love. I, I'm I'm totally digging the wordplay, you guys. Good job. And Kaylee, happy birthday. And Christine Roberto Lujan, always a member of our KUM family here. To our forever Valentines filled with a heart of gold. Happy birthday to the lovely Christine. All your friends and family, which include us over here, say we love you. Happy birthday to everybody and happy Valentine's. And of course, that's with all the bad news that we see out there. A special message tonight from one of our viewers, Jay Salas from Hoggett writes, Can I get a roast beef sandwich? But a hold the beef because I hate the violence. There you go. Sip <laughs> one up. Wise words. Right. Thanks, Jay, for that. <laughs> thanks, Pete Anderson. And that's our show. Thanks for joining us. I'm Nick Delgado. And I'm Destiny Cruz. Stay safe and have a great night. KUAM News Hotspot is brought to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. All right, Hoffman.
Cafe, everybody. Today is a very, very special show. Of course, it is Valentine's Day. So today we are bringing you this show with love. And it's all about this right here because we are celebrating the heart. We are showing you how to celebrate love and your loved ones. But most importantly, we're showing you how you could do for what you could do for somebody else's heart where you could save your life because we are going to teach you CPR, an incredibly vital skill to have. And that is today on The Hot Spot. Let's go. The Menu, brought to you by King's Restaurant, always open, always local, and Ruby Tuesday Guam, home of the fresh garden bar. On today's show in our health check report, we're going to take a look at women's heart disease. Also, we have a weekly renewal with my dear friend Claire Calvo going over another aspect of island health. And in studio, as promised, everybody, we've got our friends from the American Red Cross Guam chapter here to show Team KUM the life-saving procedure, of course, as we said, of CPR. And we are going to talk to Liz and Gina from Remax Diamond Realty about what you need to know to close that real estate deal. All right. Everybody, the American Heart Association in our health check report encourages the wearing, the wearing of red to raise awareness, and that's why I am wearing red. All my colleagues here today, all of our guests will be wearing red. Less than a half dozen or a half of the women on Guam recognize that heart disease is the number one killer of females. Here is what you need to know. Health check is presented to you by the Medical City. Girl, there's my girl. 48-year-old Dina Pinelli from Long Island, New York, walks her beloved rescue dog, Ananda. Thankful to be alive after a massive health scare in 2020 at the start of the pandemic. To have three heart attacks in 12 days, um, I can't even really comprehend it. Even two and a half years later, it's mind-blowing and life-changing and makes everything different. But she was the she, one who woke you up. She was the one that woke me up. She knew what was happening and um, she jumped up on the bed. Penelli credits Ananda for alerting her of her first heart attack while she was sleeping. But her symptoms, which she considered unusual, did not immediately bring her to the ER. My wrist just ached. Then I had pain in my back, pain in my chest. I couldn't move. NYU Langone cardiologist Dr. Harmony Reynolds says it's vital women seek help for all types of possible symptoms of cardiovascular problems, given that heart disease leads to more deaths than all forms of cancer combined. It's scary to think, could this be a heart attack? I think that people don't go to the hospital because they're afraid that it might be a heart attack. And then what? Well, then what is we treat it. Pinelli was treated with two stents and now takes several drugs. She's one of this year's Go Red for Women class of real women survivors. We have to really be mindful of our bodies. No one knows our body better than us. Pinelli is back to active exercising after her heart attacks. Her trusty companion always close by her side. Wendy Gillette, CBS News, Huntington Station, New York. All right, and now let's go and roll on in our show as Weekly Renewal is here. Here is Claire Calvo with this week's installment. Weekly Renewal is brought to you by Calvo Select Care. Half a day, I'm Claire Calvo bringing you your Weekly Renewal. The quality of our life is linked to the quality of our health. And the quality of our health is linked to the quality of our relationships. Our relationship with ourselves, our body, our emotions, as well as our relationship with others, with our surroundings, our environment. We are literally in relationships with everything around us, even down to our energetic level. And I am speaking beyond philosophy or metaphysics. Uh, in the early 1900s, Einstein was one of a couple of scientists who shared their findings on quantum physics, quantum entanglement, which basically showed that we all influence each other, affect and affect each other, regardless of proximity. So why is this important? Well, I can assume that our health and overall well-being is important to us, right? We take great measures in making sure that we maintain or even attain health and wellness, um, especially these past few years, right? How we eat, exercise and whatnot. So it's interesting to find that we put so much, we invest a lot in our health and wellness, yet the U.S. is still considered one of the most unhealthy countries in the world. We are considered the 10th most unhealthy on a global scale and the first most unhealthy uh, among the first country, first nation countries. So 
looking deeper into this, we, over the last three years, the CDC came out with a study that showed, interestingly, that the first risk factor for death with those who had COVID was underlying health conditions and obesity. The second risk factor was shown to be anxiety and fear-related disorders. In 2022, the global wellness market was worth $4.4 trillion. The U.S. wellness industry is valued at $1.2 trillion, and that's 28% of the worldwide wellness market as of 2021. Yet, like I said, the U.S. is still considered one of the most unhealthy countries. So this is not surprising when you consider the toll that chronic fear and anxiety takes on the different systems of the body. This emphasizes the fact that the physical body cannot be separated from the mental emotional body and vice versa. So aside from engaging in the activities that promote equanimity and stress reduction, what else might help? Well, studies have found that having a variety of social relationships help reduce stress and heart-related risks, lower rates of anxiety and depression, Strong, healthy relationships, and I'm going to emphasize healthy relationships, can also help strengthen the overall immune system. It was found that a healthy relationship, including a marriage, was one of the first non-biological factors identified as improving life expectancy. 54% of people who stayed single for an extended period of time showed health issues related to anxiety and depression. So let's take this a step further. It has been found that people who hug for 20 seconds or more release this feel-good hormone called oxytocin. And it's released as well as two other hormones, dopamine and serotonin. So something is really happening in the very basics, the chemicals, reaction in our body. In 2010, Australian mom Kate Ogg got the devastating news that her premature baby died and after the nurse placed her baby on her chest, the child started breathing again. This is just one of many instances where they have found that just the human touch is healing. Touch is essential for human survival. Babies who are deprived of touch can fail to thrive lose weight and may even die. Babies and young children who do not get touched also have lower levels of growth hormones. So the lack of touch can actually stunt a child's growth. So in closing, we are not only mental, emotional, physical beings, we are also social beings. And so it's important to keep in mind that when we're taking care of our physical health, our mental, emotional health, we are also keeping track of our social and energetic wellness. And if possible, get in those 20 second hugs. It's perfect timing, it's February, the month for love, starting with ourselves. Thank you so much. I will see you next time on your Weekly Renewal. Weekly Renewal is brought to you by Calvo Select Care. All right, please stay tuned everybody because a dear, dear friend of KUM, the one and only, the incomparable Cheetah Blaze, she is with the American Red Cross Guam chapter. We are going to talk about the Red Ball. Like I said, we're talking about this and we're talking about how you can use your heart to contribute to the American Red Cross and how you can save a life. So essential viewing is up next. Only Pizza Hut lets you surround your favorite pizza with greatness. The one and only stuffed crust pizza tempts your taste buds with melted cheese stuffed inside that amazing crust. And at just $18.99 with one topping, the stuffed crust pizza is truly irresistible. So grab your slice of pizza perfection with cheesy goodness baked right into the crust. The stuffed crust pizza, just $18.99 with one topping. Only at Pizza Hut, the island's best. Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment, and supplies into the islands every week. 
Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. All right, welcome back to the show, everybody. We are live on YouTube and Facebook. Now, February, if you didn't know, is American Heart Month. It's a time where we all, Guamanians, citizens of the world, whoever, we all focus on cardiovascular health. And with today being Valentine's Day, again, keep this going. Hashtag this. We here on the Hotspot want to showcase the importance of becoming CPR certified. Now, we often hear about tragedies at home, in the workplace, or even out in the field as with the recent incident with DeMar Hamlin, of course, the safety for the NFL's Buffalo Bills. And now CPR literally saved his life. He was at work, he was playing a game, and CPR is the reason he is still with us right now. Now we are gonna talk about that and do a live demo, so get your uh, note-taking hats on. But our dear friend, Miss Cheetah Blaze, is the executive director of the American Red Cross. She is with me on the KUM couch, and we are talking about the incredible, the necessary, the essential. Critical. Critical, the, the huge volume of work that the American Red Cross has. Sheena, first of all, so good to see you. It's so good to be here with you, Every time, Every time you come on the show, that means that we are going to talk about positive things. <laughs> that means we're going to talk about <laughs> saving lives, both directly with CPR and That's also right. for, for the, amount, the amount of services that the American Red Cross Guam chapter uh, gives out. So exactly what is your scope? Because I know a lot of people just think, okay, well, that's where I can go to go get CPR certified or, you know, it's that nice yes. little building with the Red Cross. But you guys actually provide a lot of direct assistance. Yes, that's only one of the yeah. uh, life-saving skills that uh, we render the community. But uh, one that is not talked about that often is our service to armed forces. And uh, that is when we allow that serviceman to go on leave to come home because of an emergency or a birth or whatever occasion there mm -hmm. is the american red cross <clears throat> is the only nonprofit organization chartered by congress to provide that uh, emergency communication so you guys actually provide all the logistics and seven. yeah to, to actually yes. bring those yes. servicemen home at the time when yes. they probably need it most yes i've got a sick parent like you said oh, or, you yes. know, my, my, gra my <clears throat> grandpa so they, just passed yes or. so they call up the red cross and we get the ball rolling for them to allow them to go and leave so she i've people, known you for 25 home. years almost half my life i didn't even know this really so yeah. there you go so, we're we're learning something. We're, we're all learning something on there, and that, that's amazing. Yes, amazingly it's positive. one of the critical services that we do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, ex as executive director, you make a lot of the high-level decisions. You also oversee a lot of volunteers who, you know, work tirelessly. For them, it's not about the money. It's not about let me put this on LinkedIn so you know yes. I can show off to all my friends. They really do this because it truly is a mission, and it it's, is. it's 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 a mission. And, and, and it's, it's a ministry. It's, it's something. no money involved. My volunteers right. are not paid. We are a volunteer-led organization. But it's to take care of your fellow man. That's, and that's right. what we're all it's about. Just, it's just coming from their hearts. Yeah. They want to volunteer. They want to be able to make a difference. And that's what is so wonderful about. Okay, and thank you for bringing volunteers. up the financial aspect because I was going to let you do that. But may and may I also preface this by saying you look absolutely stunning in red. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Slight, slight <laughs> delay there, everybody. <laughs> Remember, today is all about this. <laughs> and does she not look amazing in red? Everybody? There you go. So slight, slight uh, studio audience here we have. But that's what we were talking about too, because the red ball is the way that yes. we, we, the community, civilians, you know, military, federal contractors, whatever, that we can actually we, yes. be able to help you continue the good work that you do in the community. And for the first time, Jason, we, we, we normally hold it in September, mm -hmm. but because of the pandemic and all the delays, all the adjustments that we had to make, so we're now having a red ball on Saturday, April 29th. So save the date. It's coming up pretty soon. You know, that's close to my birthday. When's your birthday? On the 24th of that so month. So there you go. That's my mom's birthday. Really? Yes. Okay, so me, your mom, yes. Kelly Clarkson. That's who, right. Who just hosted the, uh, the NFL honors. <laughs> go, go look at that. It was crazy. Um, and and um, Red ball. Well, red ball, the 29th. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Yes. Most importantly, the red ball. Correct. Okay, so Barbara Streisand also born on that day, FYI. Um, 
So what do you have planned for this year's Red Ball? Because it's a gala event. I mean, you know, we, we have all of these people from Guam's business community, again, military leaders and government leaders mm -hmm. and everything like that. They believe in what you do. They've seen the history of the difference you Correct. make in the world. Right. Um, so what do you have on, on, on the docket as far as entertainment, food, what have you? Well, it's always like we go all out as far as the food and the raffle prices. Uh, the entertainment, we always see to it that we go local. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a time when we used to bring in entertainers from Gotta keep off local. island, right? But that's just not a not a not possible anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just too expensive. So we we have to really take care of that donated dollar and make sure that it goes where it's supposed to go. To fulfillment of our mission. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I, I do want to ask though because you know with. Um uh, current events that are happening right now. I know I've had a lot of people message me or email, uh, give me a call and say, um, I, I really, really believe because I believe the, uh, the I mean, absolutely tragic with that earthquake in Turkey. Correct, uh, correct. I believe the number of people that have now been confirmed to have passed like from that. 32, is it 32,000 or something? Is it 32? Like I know it was 28, yeah. like yeah, just last yeah, night. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so. Yeah, but it keeps on rising. And so. astonishing number. <laughs> so are we able to donate to the American Red Cross like today with the Guam chapter and say, yes. I want to help? Yes. Mm. We've had several phone calls inquiring whether they could. And yes, they can donate to the American Red Cross, meaning they can funnel their donation through the American Red Cross. Absolutely. But when they do that, they need to, to, uh, to fill out that uh, part on your check for the designated donation it sets and say, uh, you know, Turkey earthquake. All right. Yeah, I'll always add like if, yes, if, you, if yes. you're still cutting a check or if you're doing like the PayPal thing and everything, make like a little note that says, you know, Correct. I want to help Turkey and th yes. thank you and God bless you for doing that. And okay, we, we are accepting. Okay, yes. uh, we're going to have you back on the show many, many times, I'm sure, between now and April because we're going to talk about the <laughs> you, Red Ball. You better believe it. Yes, <laughs> that's from the boss. You know, I, I, I just work here. Okay, but uh, uh, please take us into this next segment because we're going to yes. go to commercial break. But we are talking about probably the service, as I said, that people know you the best for is your literal life-saving work when it comes to CPR training. Right. Yeah. That's right. Okay, how many, how many inquiries do you get about that on a per month See, basis? I knew you were going to ask that question, but probably off the top of my head, about 1,200 a year. Maybe. Wow. Yes. I it's actually a, it's, took the it's class. It's a requirement. I took the class, right, when yeah. I was at UOG. It was required that you, that you take um, you know, CPR and first aid. Yes, especially and with all the military operations that are ongoing, okay. they build up. Yeah, they need to be OSHA required. There you go. Yeah, so organizations. Aid. What? Okay. First aid and CPR. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we have uh, two friends of ours, Margie and Dan, are standing by. We're and gonna take a quick commercial break, everybody. Please make sure that you pay attention in this next segment because we are all gonna learn how to be certified in CPR when the hotspot continues. Thank you, Cheetah. Okay. Thank you so much. Twenty ones MVP. Nobody like me. Blessings, blessings, blessings. All come from life blessings. Wanna know what's next? Keep guessing. No time, no time for questions. Throw chakra on, show off. Stepping on slow mo, you can see the glow up light. The wait is over, Guam. The all-new state-of-the-art car wash is now open at Cars Plus. Introducing Finish Line Express, open seven days a week. The all-new cashless drive through car wash is also the largest car wash on island that can accommodate vehicles such as lifted Jeeps and full-size pickup trucks. Just roll up, pick a wash, insert credit card, or show your EverWash app, and roll through. Plus, power vacuums are available to clean the interior. Show your vehicle some love today at the all-new car wash at Cars Plus and Mighty. Open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. seven days a week all right welcome back to the show everybody hotspot coming at you live once again on youtube and facebook i told you we're all about this so everyone let's let's do one of these see here on the hotspot we're all about love we're also about literally the heart the thing that beats in each and every one of us now of course i'm jason silas destiny cruz my colleague nick delgado have volunteered their time they've actually come from about 10 feet away in the newsroom to actually do these demonstrations and we also have um margie and Dan, we are bookended by the tall dudes on this segment, all right? And Dan is actually um, came here by way of Washington State, former U.S. Marine. So, Dan, we thank you for your service, and we thank you for your service here today. Thank you. Okay, so um, we are, so, Nick, of course, you're a retired U.S. Army. You, not retired, Jeez, Okay. I'm not that old. Well, you, you, are, you are a veteran, but you did, yes. you, you did have first aid you training. You established that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Army, correct. Yeah, and you've had CPR training before in your military service. In basic. Okay. Destiny, have you ever had a CPR training? I have never, so I'm so excited for today. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so we do have a vet, and we got a newbie here. So, uh, Dan, given this... Uh, 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 variance and experience. Yeah, like give me, what get, do Nick and Destiny need to do? Yeah, give me 15 seconds here. 
You know, nationwide, 350 to 450,000 people a year die from cardiac arrest. Seven out of every 10 cases happens at home outside the hospital. So as first responders, we are the ones that train people and get people prepared so they know what to do. Yes, sir. That's just overall. Okay. Okay, the whole purpose of CPR, our heart is a pump. It pumps blood. The blood goes through our body. It keeps our vital organs, our kidney, our heart, our brain alive. It is very, very critical that within four to five minutes after a cardiac arrest, you have to do CPR in order for the person to survive. Mm -hmm. With that said, we're gonna show you the proper procedures. So if we could have our two volunteers, put your knees on the knee pads. The most important thing, first of all, they have all this equipment out there, AEDs on all that. The preferred number one method of CPR is with compressions. Compressions are the most critical and important part of it. To do a compression, please move the mask to the side. All right, take your fingers like this, lock them up, put your other ones behind them. Kick it back, straight back like this, put the palm right in the sternum. They'll show you where the sternum is at. Well, he's going to have to pull this off because he's going to have to earn his so money. So the sternum is also known as the breastbone, right? It's the breastbone right in the center. Just yeah. follow the nipple line, and it's right in the center of the chest. Okay. Lean your shoulders forward over the body. There you go. Leave keeping your arms straight. Press down two inches. Go ahead and give me a compression. Push harder. There you go. All right. The speed limit, you're going to be doing compressions because when you're giving CPR, it's 30 compressions, two breaths. That's one cycle. You're going to do five cycles in a two-minute period. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and give me 10 compressions and make sure you're doing them right. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The same beat is staying alive. Okay. All right. Well, okay. Well, De if, if I if I could just let you know something, Destiny is actually a professional musician. Destiny, go ahead and sing "Staying Alive" just so people know. All right. So we'll just start. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 you Good know job. what? You know what? In, in advertising, we call that mnemonics. And, mnemonics. And, and, and as silly as it seems right now, right. this is actually going to help you should you be should you need to yeah. help someone in an emergency. Okay. It works good. All right. So you, go ahead and All right. Wow. And you have okay. to lift that shoulder. All okay, right, so you're getting then, leverage from your weight, right? right? Okay. Now we're going to, all right, that's the most important part. It's optional. There's a change made. You can go and stop from it. There's a change made about two and a half years ago where it's optional if you blow in. And it came out just before all the COVID and everything. So okay. It was just okay. fine, right? But. If you're gonna get certified, you need to know how to blow in if you decide to do so. So we're gonna show you. Take your left hand and put two fingers on the chin. Two fingers on the chin. Take your right hand and put two fingers on the forehead. There you go. Tilt the head back. This is called opening the airway. You have mm. to open the airway. Now, after you open the airway, pinch the nose. Go ahead and pinch the nose. And now these have been sanitized and they're clean. So go ahead and pinch the nose and blow into it and see if the chest will rise. You have to, if it don't rise, we tilt the head back. You need to Did tilt the head it back more. <laughs> tilt it back and then blow in. Staying alive. All right. Yeah. Did, did okay. it go up? Yes. That's a good sign. I don't know if you saw that, but Nick just All slipped right. and he gave our uh, mannequin a little rhinoplasty there. A right. little, little nose job. So anyway, you're going to give two of those. And that's gonna be one cycle. You did 30 compressions, two breaths. You're gonna do five of those cycles in a two minute period. You're moving on this. Okay. All right, and it's that staying alive beat. So what we're gonna have you do is we're gonna have you do one cycle here where you do 30 compressions, you tilt ahead and you blow in twice, okay? okay? All right, on your mark, get set, go. One, two, three, four, five, okay, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. One, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Tilt that head, pinch that nose, blow. Wait one second and blow in again. There you go. 
and straight back up. So Nick Hold Delgado on. and Destiny Cruz are learning how to apply life-saving measures, and I just demonstrated my falsetto. Yeah, now they just, they just did one cycle. We're going to be doing five of those cycles in a two-minute period. Wow. wow. It is some work. Okay, I, I must ask, Dan, um, how... How long can the average person, you know, do this? And I get, you know, if someone's if someone's in cardiac arrest, you know, you've got adrenaline, you probably you've got anxiety and everything. How long can, can say like Destiny do this? Um, if I was experiencing a cardiac issue before she would herself, you know, maybe like be on the verge of passing out or something. If it's a family member or something, you're going to go until you're totally exhausted. There you go. If it's an ex-boyfriend, well, <laughs> not, not that bad. But, the, but, but, but they're going to go along. Destiny, time. this is way better than blocking some yeah, dude. It is. Hey, there, there's five situations in which you stop CPR. Mm. Okay. Number one, another trained responder has come. They've taken over. Uh, you defer to the pros. Okay. Right. Okay. Number two, the paramedics have arrived and they came over and told you when to stop to do what you're doing. Mm. Number three, your life is in danger. There's the fire coming your way. Okay. Right. Number four, they've started to kick and show signs of life, right? Yes. Yes. And number five, and this is the most serious part, you're just totally exhausted. You can't go no more. Uh. And that means there's going to be a rosary. So how far are you going to go? We don't know. We hope we don't have to find out. Yes. Right? right? Yes. But any other questions on this? Okay. Um, okay. Well, one, one thing real quick, because, man, I wish we could be here the rest of the afternoon. We're running out of time. But um, right. Destiny and Nick were obviously doing this on adult form mannequins. How about, Dan, real quick, we've got 30 seconds. What if they had to do this, I mean, perish the thought, on a young person or an infant? All right. On a young person, which is considered a child or a very small, fragile adult. Right. All right. Uh, you may have to use one hand instead of two hands when you do the compressions. Okay. But when you're given CPR, it's not clean. There's a chance there's going to be a couple of broken or fractured ribs. That's the cost of saving a life. And a broken rib, I guess, is better than a heart attack, right? Yeah. Fatal. Yeah. No, yeah, heart attack is different from cardiac arrest. Cardiac okay. arrest, oh, thank you. Okay. the heart stopped. Okay. Gotcha. And basically, they're dead. You're bringing them back alive. Okay. Right? So did that answer? Yes, absolutely. That, that question there. Okay, Dan, thank you so much, sir. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank guys. You. Did good. Thank you did you. so much. Very, very good. Nick Destiny, outstanding. And, very, very good. Okay, so and, we started this segment with showing the heart. We're going to end it the only way we know how here on the hotspot by driving home the point. It's what we do here at KUM. You know, all love everybody. So our friends at the American uh, Red Cross. Where's Cheetah? Uh, che Cheetah's watching. off on the side. Che Cheetah. <laughs> Especially for, may I also say that you guys look absolutely fetching in red. Yeah. This this way, okay, wait, wait, wait okay. We As we go that. to commercial break, one more uh, pose. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're back after this. <laughs> I can't make that amount work right now. Mom, what is it?